I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. I am Cotton, Blade of Melania. I'm Greg, Blade of Cotton. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, one of the more interesting things going on in the world of Elden Ring is the Scarlet Rot, a fungal disease created by the result of the power of an outer god attempting to bestow its will upon the lands between, most known for its connection to Melania, Blade of Mikola. Whenever Melania enters a life or death situation, a Scarlet Aeonia forms, releasing Scarlet Rot around her. This is what happened to make Caled, well, an absolute hellhole, covered head to toe in fungal growths and creatures infected with fungal growths. Basically, the plague, but mushrooms. Obviously, this power in the game world, in the lore, is significant, and its power in actual in-game effect is pretty great too. It has a similar effect to poison, building up and then dealing damage over time when triggering, and in fact, it actually deals more damage than poison does over the same duration, making it understandably extremely strong and desirable. As well, there are items that you can use to buff your character when playing around it, such as the Kindred of Rot's Exultation Talisman or the Mushroom Crown, both buffing attack power when something in your vicinity is affected by Scarlet Rot. With all that said, there are both various lore and power reasons that Scarlet Rot is actually super cool, so how can you, as the player, put it in your hands? How many weapons are there in the game with Scarlet Rot inbuilt into them? Can they be infused with Ashes of War? And where are they? The short answer? There are eight of them. Half of them can be infused with new ashes, and they are all in various places. The long answer is the rest of this video. First up then, in order of when you can access them in your playthrough, will likely be the Ant Spur Rapier. This thrusting sword made from the spur of an ant, which for some reason in Elden Ring all seem to be carriers of Scarlet Rot, making me think that the ants and the Scarlet Rot God may be a bit more related than my imagination would like, it's quite pretty looking. It can be infused with Ashes of War, allowing you to add more statuses or debuffs to the damage as well as changing the weapon skill to being whatever you would like it to be, rather than the default impaling thrust. To use it, you will need 10 strength strength and 20 dexterity, and to find it, head to the moat outside the Shaded Castle in the north of the Altus Plateau. To the west of the castle itself, you'll find a gentleman named Malay Murray. Kill him in cold blood right outside of his home, you vicious murderer, and then take his clothes and weapon too. Secondly today is the Scorpion Stinger Dagger. The description of this weapon specifically says it was a ceremonial tool of heretics, crafted from the relic of a sealed outer god. In theory, this is the same god responsible for the Scarlet Rot in general, and so we actually get to see a bit further behind the curtain. Maybe a scorpion type creature of some sort? The weapon itself is quite cool looking, though uh, tiny, I guess it is a dagger, and the base weapon skill on it is repeating thrust, attempting to apply Scarlet Rot as quickly as possible, and you can apply an Ash of War to the weapon to change it as well. To use it you need 6 strength and 12 dexterity, and to get one of your own, get to the Lake of Rot region, which can be done through Rani's quest line, link in the description if you want guidance with that, but once you are there, get to the Grand Cloister site of Grace and from there safely drop down to the ground level of the area and progress to the massive structure in the west with all of the prawns in front of it. Getting in here can be a little bit hairy, but once you are inside, open the chest to find this weapon. Anyone else worried about the fact that the ceremonial dagger of an outer god is being worshipped by prawns? No? Uh, okay, I guess it's probably fine. Third, we have the Rotten Battle Hammer. This one is gorgeous. I love the battle hammer design in this game. I sort of completely wish that they came with the chains attached to them, like the enemies who wield them, but uh, they're still great anyways, I guess. And this one comes with Rod on it by default. By default, it also comes with the Braggart's Roar skill, but like a few others, this weapon, the Ash of War, is changeable. To use it for yourself, you'll need 26 strength and 8 dexterity, and to acquire one for yourself, you must reach the Consecrated Snow fields region of the game. From the eponymous site of Grace, head a short distance northwest and you'll find yourself a small graveyard. In here is a rotten duelist enemy wielding this weapon. Defeat him and you'll get the hammer as well as his sweet helmet. Fourthly comes the rotten great axe, the pairing to the rotten battle hammer. This one is a colossal weapon wielded by the other variation of the rotten duelist enemy and it looks just as good. I personally am a big fan of large axes and this is one hell of a large axe. The base Base skill is Endure, allowing you to take a hit with ease for a brief period after pressing it, and you can apply an Ash of War if you want to as well. To wield it on your own, you need 30 Strength and 10 Dexterity, and to get this one, also in the Consecrated Snowfields region, head to the Ordina Lethargical Town, Site of Grace, and then head northwest up to the edge of the cliff towards the imposing figure in the distance. Kill him, ideally without throwing him off the cliff, but if you do, you can still run around the long way to loot the body, on which you will find the Rotten Duelist Pants as well as the Rotten 
Great Axe. Fifth up, we have another colossal weapon, the Rotten Staff. Not to be confused with a casting staff, this is a Wacken Staff, used by the Rotten Airdry avatars to beat the crap out of you while inflicting Scarlet Rot. The weapon skill it comes with is Airdry Slam, the big holy version of the Ground Slam skill, which is hilarious and lovely, but sadly, though this weapon is the Rotten Staff, it is not the Rotten Airdry version of this attack. I say as if it wouldn't be broken as hell to have your weapon skill create a gigantic cloud of repeatedly damaged ticking Scarlet Rot Mist. Anyways, to wield it, you need 34 strength and 8 dexterity, and to get your own first head into the Halig Tree Mega Dungeon itself. Then from the Prayer Room Site of Grace, head out until you reach the second beam on your right. Jump onto it to cross to the big pillar, then jump down from there to the outer wall and you'll see an Air Tree boss patrolling. Defeat them and they will drop this staff just for you. Sixthly, we have the Rotten Crystal Sword. This one is just like the Crystal Sword, the regular Crystal Sword, except that it does rot damage. This one actually looks really, really cool. It's interesting as a concept that the Scarlet Rot can even infect crystals, and how that could impact life over time as it spreads even further throughout the lands between. The weapon skill on this is Spinning Slash, and unfortunately it cannot be replaced, but that is the cost of looking sick sometimes. To actually use this weapon, you need 13 Strength, 10 Dexterity, and 15 intelligence, and to acquire it for yourself still in the Halig Tree dungeon, this time go to the Elphiel Inner Wall Site of Grace and get comfy, as not only this one, but the final two entries as well come from directly around the corner from here. But that doesn't mean that you'll be in and out lickety split, unfortunately. From the Site of Grace, head down these stairs and take a left. You'll see three Crystallians and a chest. Open the chest and inside of it will be the Rotten Crystal Sword. Good luck making it back out alive. Uh, I didn't. Seems easy, right? Don't worry. We'll We'll be back here. Seventh then is the Rotten Crystal Spear, and this thing is absolutely gorgeous to me. I love the designs of these Rotten Crystal weapons especially. They are so unique and inspired. The weapon skill on this one is Charge Forth, which is actually a decent skill, especially when you consider it has a fast hit rate on a Scarlet Rot applying weapon. It sort of works out in the end. To wield it, you'll need 10 Strength, 16 Dexterity, and 16 Intelligence, and to get one for yourself, well, remember that group of three Crystallians beside the Alphael inner wall site of Grace in the chest? Two of them wield this weapon, and each of those has a chance of dropping it when you kill them, meaning that you'll have to kill them multiple times to get it more than likely. The drop chance isn't insanely low by any means, but these are not easy enemies, and they spawn in a group of three in an enclosed area. However, you can use ranged weaponry to pull them one at a time, and if you have patience, you can actually fight them one at a time, specifically picking and choosing which one you want to engage with, as if you want the spear, you'll need to kill the ones wielding the spear, but you'll also have to kill the other one if you want the final weapon today the Rotten Crystal Staff. This one is a little awkward, given it is a casting tool that functions exactly the same as the regular Crystal Staff, boosting Crystallian sorceries. However, unlike what you may imagine from both the name, effects, and the enemy who uses it against you, it doesn't make any sorceries apply Scarlet Rot buildup. Sadly, not even the Crystallian ones, which would have been a great little specific touch if they did. The Scarlet Rot buildup is purely on melee hits, and the weapon has no skill on it nor the ability to apply an Ash of War. So literally speaking, this is a rotten crystal staff in the sense that you can cast sorceries with it, of course, and then I guess choose to walk up and smack people with it to very slowly and poorly build up Scarlet Rot if you want. But hey, it looks really cool, right? So th there's that. If you want to wield this one, you need eight strength and a whopping 48 intelligence. And of course, it is dropped by the staff wielding Crystallion of the trio by the Elphael in our wall, Sight of Grace. It almost feels like they got to this point in the game and we're just like, oh wait, we wanted to put these three different weapons in and then just shoved it all in one corner. But hey, it makes it all super efficient to gather at least once you get the hang of fighting Crystallians in a corner. But that just about covers it, everyone. I've been Cotton Dinosaur from Rage Gaming Videos, and this has been the full collection of eight Scarlet Rot weapons in Elden Ring. Are you going to try using any of these out and applying Scarlet Rot to your enemies in an act of loyalty to an unknown outer god? Or have you already been doing that for weeks and now just become aware of more new options to do it? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.